as in the previous implementation where we designed a very basic application using WPF, you may have observed like in XAML, it is going through some level of nesting. Like for example, first of all, we got the windows element. Inside that, we put a grid or any other container control such as stack panel or some others. And inside that, we put some actual controls like text box, button, label, and maybe some other controls. So whether it's a time of designing or it's an output screen, WPF will show you some sort of hierarchy or a tree structure out there. And here we are going to discuss that only in the concept called elements tree. So basically, these elements tree are here to use, is, is used to show the or to create the hierarchical tree structure. It is used to order the elements and components in a tree structure. So basically it has a comprehensive tree structure in form of object and most importantly, this is going to help you to create and identify the relationship between the UI elements. So basically when you put the uh, grid under windows, it is showing you a level of hierarchy and a relation between the grid and the window. Maybe inside grid, you put some more container controls such as stack panel and inside that you put the button. So it will show you how you are going to design. So whenever you put this hierarchy, it is going to show you the relationship. And in WPF particularly, we have two kinds of tree structure such as the logical tree structure and visual tree structure. Logical tree structure is something which you can see by the time you are designing a windows form in WPF. All right. So it is the structure of UI elements in XAML represent the logical tree structure because by the time you are designing, you are working in XAML. So what's the use of this logical tree structure? This logical tree structure can be used in order to get the dependency properties, which we are going to cover in our coming videos, as well as the bindings like static resource or dynamic resource. While if I talk about visual tree structure, it is something which you see at the output screen. It signifies all the UI elements which are rendered to the output screen. All right, means at the runtime. So obviously it's going to help you somewhere when you will do something in the runtime. So basically since it is the UI, GUI application, all right. So here we will be working on an events driven programming. And in event driven programming, it is going to be a bit different. Like if you have gone through the win forms, here you will get the event args, all right? So if you're clicking a button, that button will raise or generate an event handler. But here it's going to take a routed event, all right? All right? Like here, as you can see, there's a root and then it come to branches. So this routing will also be implemented by the time you will be working with the event. So that's why it's saying here, the routed events mostly travel along with the visual tree since it is something at the runtime visual tree so events whatever the routed events will take place that will follow this visual tree not the logical tree because that will be used at the time of designing itself all right so let's see a practical implementation where i am just creating a normal wpf form and they will analyze the difference between the logical and visual tree structure so as far as the logical tree is concerned here right here in the example you can see that like first of all there is a window that is the main window inside that window you have a grid and inside the grid you have a button and a label so this is how you can plan any of your control to be placed all right so whenever you put anything out here as i said in the designing time itself you will be getting this logical tree in case you will perform any binding that will also be specified right here in the XAML. So that's why I said in the description, like as far as the bindings are concerned, you can get all the information regarding binding out here in the logical tree. Like for, as I said, like first it's a window, then grid, and then maybe some other controls. Maybe you can put some more uh, stacked panel or something all will be coming down under as a tree structure, right? You can see the hierarchy out here. For example, if I don't want to put content like this, I will just re remove this one here. And 
what I'll do, I'll just make it a pair tag and right here inside I will say click here. So basically it is nothing but a text block which is putting this particular content. The output will still look the same but the way is different, right? First it is button and then inside there is some text block where I put this text, click here, alright? But if I'll talk about the visual tree, that is something when I will execute this particular program. So what I'll do, I'll just execute this. I, this is the same code which I just worked earlier in the previous chapter as well. So let's execute it now. And right now you can notice on the left hand side I got the live visual tree. When I will click here, it will begin with the main window itself. But inside there is a border, there are some decorators, then there are content presenter. Content presenter, there is a grid button label, alright. That's why it's a visual tree, means actually you can't find these decorators, content presenter out there in the main window, but this is how it performs at the runtime. So that is why I said like whenever you want to perform any action at the runtime, you will have to refer this visual tree. For example, if you talk about the event handling, that event will be applied to a button or, pen or maybe to any particular control. So those tracings will be taking place at the runtime using these visual trees. And now it's you can see like button, then border, content presenter and then there is a text block. I put the text of the button in such a way but if I will talk about label, still you will find a text block for a label though it is not having a nesting inside for the content but still the way to perform the things at the runtime will remain same. So these are the visual trees and logical trees of WPF which can be utilized at a particular moment whenever it is required and definitely we are going to use them in our coming videos where I'll talk about the bindings or maybe any event handling.